Hey there, Henry Fernandez. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to address something that if you're not careful, you will fall a victim to, and that is losing yourself in the process. Anything that you're doing in life, if you're not careful, you can lose yourself. So I want to talk to you about don't lose yourself. You are the only you that exist. Believe it or not, you are the only you who exist, if you will. There's not another copy of who you are. You are the original. And if you lose who you are, then you become a copycat of really, you know, what you're not. So each of us, I believe, we possess unique qualities. The day we were born, God gave us unique qualities. You are different from me. I'm different from you. You are absolutely different from everybody else, right? And God created you that way. Qualities that are in you must be nurtured. If you don't nurture those qualities, you won't be successful. You will live your life attempting to be who you are not and uh, only to find out that you end up being a failure in the end because you're trying so many things. And so many people are guilty of this, trying so many things and never master any. You know, one of the things I got to tell you to do. You must find your niche in life. When you find your niche, when you find what you were born to do, oh my goodness, it changes your entire outlook on life. So whatever you do, don't lose who you are. I know a lot is against you. I know that you feel like, you know, really you just it doesn't make sense you try anymore, especially women um, find themselves at a place where, you know, they give so much because by nature, they are the ones who give birth to life, right? A woman gives birth to life. And if you're not careful in giving birth to life, she loses her own life. Never allow that to happen. You see, giving birth to life, whether it is a physical child or giving birth to your home, your, you know, your ministry as your role as a wife or a businesswoman or working in corporate America, in government, no matter what, in the school system, you've got to make sure that while you are giving life to others, you don't lose yourself. So believe it or not, there uh, is only one of you in the earth, which I just spoke about. There's only one of you. And you need to be careful that you don't get caught off guard spending quality time, you know, um, whether it's on social media, media or group conversations, group chats, trying to understand other people, trying to discover other people's um, niche or trying to figure out what other people are doing that you lose yourself, that you don't spend time finding you. That's why I don't understand people who gossip. I really don't. I don't. Because you find these people who gossip, whether it's in group chat, digital gossiping. That's a new term now, digital gossiping. You know, one time, you know, gossip would be, you know, electronically, maybe on the phone or in person, but digital gossiping is what's really messing up this world today because you've got at your fingertip, you know, all of these social media platforms, these apps, and you can chat and, and you know, uh, I'm not involved in those things, but it's amazing, you know, what you hear that the chat rooms, you know, when people say chat rooms are lit, then you have to ask yourself the question, is it lit to edify or is it lit just to get, get you to spend so much time trying to catch up on things that doesn't even concern you? Think about that. Things that doesn't even concern you. You know, I remember years ago um, on television 
what blew up was reality TV. Remember that? Reality TV. When reality TV started, you know, a lot of us resented it because we know it was a dangerous path, right? Um, it, it, it's people allowing cameras in their private lives. And some of it was just a show, really. It, you know, the producers create scenarios because they know what sells. Come on now. You know what sells is gossip, trash, sex, because that's what society is craving for. And while, watch this, it may feel good. The truth is, in all of it, you lose yourself. Because people who spend time in chat rooms and they gossip and so forth, a lot of times that, that's precious time wasted when they could use that time, redirect that time to better themselves and encourage themselves uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to do better. So uh, you, you got to make that commitment from today to say, I am not going to allow myself to um, be lost while, you know, I, I am busy doing things that doesn't edify uh, me. You see, each and every one of you who are watching or listening, you're driving, you're, you know, you're hustling, you, you know, you're doing your thing to make life. You have to ask yourself the question and you have to truthfully answer this question. Why did God allow you to enter the earth's atmosphere? Why? Think about it. First of all, you are not an afterthought. And I want to talk to every person there. Let me talk to the women first. I want to talk to women I, I, it doesn't matter. I, I don't care of your past. I don't care how you, you don't know your daddy. Um, you probably, probably your parents were not good parents. You know, you hated it. You, you felt shortchanged. Um, maybe your first boyfriend broke your heart. Maybe men broke your heart and you're bitter. You're angry. Maybe you're a divorcee. Uh, maybe you are a rape victim. You know, that's a big thing now, the Me Too movement. Uh, maybe you felt violated. He, the list goes on and on. I have to tell you this. You have to get to a place where you have to owe yourself, watch this, owe yourself the responsibility of making sure that you matter in this world that you matter. And if you don't consider yourself important, no one else will. That's why people will abuse you, take advantage of you. There are men who also went through, whether it's sexual molestation, men who grew up without a father, men who, who confused identity, uh, men who are struggling with, um, you know, making ends meet, struggling educationally, struggling with their career, struggling health-wise, and so forth. You know, you have to tell yourself, everybody gets tested. Everybody was given unique qualities to pull ourselves out of every problem life will ever present us. And make sure we matter. Make sure our footprints are on the earth. Make sure the path that we take is very fulfilling. You have to listen. I get it. I, beyond the fluff of Christianity, I, I get that. There's a fluff of Christianity. You know, the things we sugarcoat and pretty up and all that kind of the stuff. You know, but when, when you read the scripture, at the end of the day, God wants you, ma'am, and you, sir, to be a perfect reflection of who he created you to be at the end of the day. And if you're not coming or measuring up to the image of God, forget it, man. You're not fulfilling your purpose. You have lost your identity. And I think the first thing you need to do in order to find yourself is to really discover who you are. Who are you? I mean, can you really answer that question? Who are you? I mean, 
does your definition of who you are, is it based on what someone told you? Is it based on what your parents just said? Uh, is it based on what your boyfriend is telling you, your girlfriend is telling you? Is it based on what your husband or your wife is telling you, your children or your best friend? Uh, is it based on what society is, is telling you, regardless of what country you're from? You know, who are you? Until you answer that question, you will forever, ever lose yourself to people, systems, and culture. That's it. Because people don't know who they are. They try to fit in. And I have to tell you, you don't fit in everywhere. Please hear me. Young lady, you don't fit in everywhere. Middle-aged woman, senior, you don't fit in everywhere. You have to embrace who you are and embrace every stage of your life. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, God. Embrace every stage of your life. Live it to the fullest, of course, in God's way. So when you're a teenager, please, as you're listening as a teenager, live your best life now. Maximize your full potential in that stage of your life because you're only there once. Once you pass that stage, you can't go back. Now, you may try to fit in, but you can't, right? You can't. When you reach that young adult um, age, our stage, you know, that's it. You can't go back. You know, that stage is the stage where you're trying to find yourself. And if you don't really find yourself in your young adult stage, God help you. You know, by the time you reach your your 40s and your 50s, um, you know, I'm telling you, 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 you may end up being disappointed. And there's so many people in their 40s that I, as a spiritual leader in counseling and talking with them and listening to them, I recognize that they don't even know who they are. They've lost themselves in the process. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, you know, how people will lose themselves, uh, lose themselves, I should say, in the process. So you have to answer that question. Why did God allow you to enter the earth's atmosphere? There has to be a reason. You are not an afterthought. He brought you here for a reason. I had to answer that question uh, one day, and it took me late in my, you know, adult age stage, if you will, to come to that conclusion that, wait a minute, there's more to Henry than what the eye sees. You know, there's more to me than what people think. There's more to me than what my feelings is telling me. And I had to have an encounter with me who am I? Don't, 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 not based on what people say, not based on not what society, who are you, Henry? And I found out that there are some qualities in me that God blessed me with those qualities. So I start working those qualities. I start developing those qualities. And I've discovered that I am a better version of who I am when I just be who God has called me to be. Oh, that's good. That's good. So as you're watching and you're listening to the podcast, I'm, I'm trying to get you, some of you, I'm telling you, you are not maximizing your potential. Here it is. You're a very attractive young woman. You're a very attracted attractive middle-aged woman. You are in your seniors, you are attractive. You are a handsome young man, handsome middle-aged man. I mean, you've got a lot going for, for you. Looks are great. You're wonderful. You've achieved a lot of stuff. You've got your education, your degree, and, and, and all those kinds of things, but, but you feel empty. You're insecure, right? You're a ticking time bomb. You, you're fragile. And I understand some of you are breaking down right now and tears running down your eyes because you know I'm talking to you. You feel unfulfilled. You just feel, you just you know you're not what you're supposed to be. You feel empty. You feel lost. You feel like you've been used, abused, and you just feel rejected. Come on, you know all of those things, right? And the enemy, oh, some of you have allowed the enemy 
to use your mind as his playground. I mean, he is just getting into your head. You're hearing voices. You can't sleep at night. You're frustrated. You're, you're, you're full of anxiety, all those kinds of things. Listen, when you answer that question, who did God call me to be on the earth? When you answer that, it changes everything. It changes everything about who you are. So I want you to first do that. Before the end of this day, pray this prayer. God, please help me to discover why I came to earth. There has to be a reason. Jesus came to earth for a reason. Moses was born for a reason. Joshua was born for a reason. Come on now. Adam, Eve, all were born for a reason. The first two human beings that was never birthed out of a woman, Adam was birthed out of God creating from the dust of the earth. The woman was birthed out of a man. <laughs> Crazy, right? And then ever since God then orchestrated it, where life comes from the woman now. Every woman came on, on the earth for a reason. Naomi came, Ruth came for a reason. Esther came for a reason. The harlot, the prostitute came for a reason. The woman at the well came for a reason. And the list goes on and on. All of us are on the planet for a reason. You are unique. And God has an incredible love for you, regardless of what you've done. Some of you, you know what? Yes, let's just be honest. We've all done some stuff, man, that we're not proud of, our past. Sometimes if you don't get delivered, if you don't ask God, you know, to help you to clear your mind and somehow let the Holy Spirit becomes your, uh, what they call it, um, your um, your virus protection, if you will. You know, in a computer, you have these virus protection um, software, you know, that will prevent your computer from get, getting hacked or, you know, getting, you know, hacked with a virus and so forth. You know, the Holy Spirit will help you because, you know what, once you ask God to for forgiveness of your past, then that's it. Don't let it torment you. Because all he wants to do is to let you not know who you are and you wander in life for years, missing out on what God has in store for you. So never lose yourself to anything in any stages of your life. Never. Never lose yourself while pleasing family. I'm going to list a couple of things where many of us lose ourselves. Never lose yourself while pleasing family. Take care of your family. Some of you got your uncles, your cousins, your aunties, your nieces, your nephews, you name it. You know your whole family. If you're not careful, family could be the ones who test you the most. Family can cause you to live bitter and in anger. You cannot allow that to happen. Some of you are constantly given to family, not just money, but given time, always there to bail them out in whatever form or the other. You got to be careful that you're not given so much to your family that you lose yourself. And that sounds cold, right? Because your family is there to, of course, as a support, you love your family, That that I understand that but you cannot afford to give so much to them that in turn you lose yourself. And you do know that your family members will, will in a heartbeat, you know. Have you noticed a lot of times when you need them, you can't find them? But it's isn't it strange that when they're in need, somehow your address is locked into their GPS? <laughs> Somehow, your phone number is on auto dial. Come on now. Somehow, they have a special follow link 
to your social media platform. They know how to contact you. They know how to reach you. And some of you, the, your whole family drama has consumed your life so much, you don't even know who you are. You don't even have time to rest. You don't even have time to recruit. You don't even have time to rejuvenate yourself because you've given so much to your family. I'm not telling you not to do that. But you have to learn that if you don't take care of you, then you have nothing to give to them. So you have to make sure that you don't lose yourself while pleasing family. Make sure you don't lose yourself while, while you're in pursuit of your career. Now, this can be very tricky because, yes, hustle until you make it. Yes, do your job, you know, start your business, do what you need to do. But I've seen it over and over that people work so much for a company and, and you put so much in and so forth and you ought to do that but you lose yourself because you cannot benefit that company if you're not your authentic self, right? And sometimes people do that is not so much a love for the company and their responsibility. They do it because sometimes the, 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 the thing that they look at is the end result, which is the paycheck. And I got to say this, and I know it's going to rub some, some of you the wrong way, but if you're, if, if, if you're consumed with working and that that whole passion is all about money, I promise you, you will fail. You will end up, may have a lot of things if you spend your money wisely to show for your effort, but in the end, you're going to render yourself unfulfilled. Do your job. Go to your job. But you can't work every day, don't have enough sleep. Get in, you, you just can't do that. No social life. How, how in God's name you work in, say, 15 hours, I'm just throwing that out, 15 hours a day, and you're working six days a week, seven days a week, but you're praying and saying, God, you know, I want, I want a husband. I want a wife. You know, I want to have children. I want to have, how, where, where are you going to find time to date? You know, and, and, and there is such a thing where you have to draw the line in life. You have to make a decision in life that, you know what, uh, there's a limit. There has to be a limit because if you don't set boundaries, oh my goodness, I'm telling you, it's open field for the devil. So you've got to make sure while you're in pursuit of your career that you don't lose yourself. Find time to relax, find time to rest. You know, I have a, a philosophy that, Every working person, I don't care what level of job you have, what pay scale you're at, every person once a year should take time and get away from it all. I'm not telling you to travel to Greece, Paris, the Caribbean, but even on a minimum wage job, you can get in the car, drive down to Fort Lauderdale Beach, Drive down to the beach in your area. If you're in the central part of the country, drive to some amusement park somewhere. Do something. Unwind. Do you. Find something that makes you relax. Get away from work for a few days. Take vacation. Right? And when you get, say you take a week off, somebody may call you. Girl, I got a, I got, I got a little extra job for you and so forth. It pays this. Sometimes, you know, you may need the money. But if you're that desperate that you have to go get that job to hustle to make a little bit more money, you, you may be over your head. You may See, the life that you need to live, and please hear me, the life that you need to live is a life where you're content. You can't have it all at the same time. You can have all that God wants for you, but you must understand that those things will come in stages. But you can't just have it all in one year. You can't burn both ends of the candle at the same time. It's got to be one. Have you ever heard that phrase before? So be careful. Make sure that you don't lose yourself while in pursuit of starting or maintaining your businesses. So again, this is another problem area. Some of you are running your business. Some of you are working 
you know, for somebody else, but having a part-time business, do not lose yourself. It's, it's only one of you. You are gifted. And, and if, if again, I, I want to talk to people who are hoping to have a, a partner one day. It is unfair for you to overwork yourself, exhaust yourself to the point where you don't even know who you are. You've lost your joy, your happiness. You're not good company anymore. You're miserable. You're stressed. It is unfair for you to connect with another human being and that's what you bring to the table when you marry them. It's, it's totally unfair. I think no one should get married until you are mentally and emotionally healed. Don't you ever get this twisted that a man or a woman can make you happy. I keep telling you all that. No human being on this planet can make you happy. You have to own your own happiness. Own your own happiness. Create your own happy space. So when someone comes along, you set the standard. You are demanding that they can't come and threaten that peace that you have. They can only come and see that you are loved, by the way. You are already loved by God. You value yourself. So all they're going to come to do is to enhance that love, is to glow in that love. So as a woman, when you marry a man, you know, you know he's not going to come to find out that you have self-esteem issues, um, that you have um, issues with your identity, your personality, and you're grumpy, you're grouchy, you're miserable, um, you're very sensitive and so forth. You know, he, he doesn't have to come to deal with that. He shouldn't have to come to deal with that. He'll come and find that you you are a settled woman. So now watch this. He's at peace with you. He then can function in his role to, to love you. Because you see, you love yourself. But the Bible commands a man to love a woman. Uh, you know, I saw this the other day and I so agree with it. There's nowhere in the Bible, and I know, listen, I don't have time. This is not the subject. I'll do it another day. Uh, there's nowhere in the scripture where it says a, the Bible commands a woman to love a man. Check it out. What the scripture says, that husbands love your wives, according to us, how Christ loved the church. Go look at the woman's role of what God said a woman ought to do to a man. Because the woman should already possess the love for herself, the love that God has given her by loving. Men don't struggle with, you know, some men do, but men by nature, it's not so much, this is shocking, it's not so much love we're looking for. No. Men are just looking for a safe place, peaceable place. If you can make that man's life peaceable, where he can come home knowing that it's his safe heaven, it's not a judgmental zone, it's a place where he can be at peace, he can be himself, he's not attacked. If, if he can come and feel that way, it's easy for him to love you. So I'm going into a whole lot of stuff. That's a whole nother podcast, right? But, but the love that you have for your business, if, if you have so much love for it that you lose yourself, then when you get married, that no wonder it's not going to last. It's not going to be effective. It's not going to be loving because you are a workaholic, whether a man or a woman. And, uh, you know, when people get together, people want to know that you value them, okay? Um, some people lose themselves in dating, how is that possible? Because when you're dating somebody, if you're not careful, you consume your life trying to please them. And I got to say this to singles, man. Stop killing yourself to please people. That woman you're trying to please, you know, a woman will say, I like you this way. And, you know, you this and you got to do this for me. And a woman will demand, well, you, got, you know, I hear it. And I know you're going to attack me, ladies. Women say, well, if you're going to take me on a date, you better take me to a fine dining restaurant, da, 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 da. And you're going to take me to the best of this. And, and the brother, you know, of course, you know, he's saving up 
to buy a car. He's saving up to, you know, maybe to benefit you and so forth. But now, you know, you know, every time you go on a date, I'm not saying he shouldn't take you to those places ever. But if that's all you want, um, then, you know, you, somehow somebody's going to lose themselves because that's not you. You know, you don't, I don't believe, this is for me, I believe in, in loving a woman to the point of showing her that you value her, but I don't believe in impressing her. Because the problem with impression is when you make an impression on someone, if it's not organically done, there are flaws in it. See, that's why many of you women get hurt in the process. Many of you men get hurt in the process. Women do things to impress you, what they wear, how they act. And then when you get to know them and you get close to them, you're like, Jesus, this woman is possessed. <laughs> you, know, you know, when you finally get the guy, you're saying, this guy is a lunatic, lunatic. He's crazy. He, you know, I can't be with this guy. This guy has been damaged, right? Because we're trying to impress. You don't need to impress. You know, what you need to do in dating is be your authentic self. Like, you know, don't, if you're trying to look, if you, you see a girl you like, guys, listen, you see a girl you like and so forth, all right, fine. You know, of course, I'm not saying, you know, disrespect her and, you know, whatever, but be yourself. Go, hey, my name is Henry. How you doing? Um, you know, I'm not sure if you're interested in this, but I've been noticing you and think, you know, I like you a lot, you know, and I'm not going to um, try to, you know, beat around the bush. I do like you. Not sure if you're interested. I'd like to take you on a date. Okay. She give in and so forth. Please don't. Don't rent a helicopter and land right in her front yard and fly her away to some restaurant on the ocean and so forth. Because at the end of the day, you won't have to keep that up. And when you can't keep it up, because with a woman, you try that with a woman in the first date, honey, you are, what? You are done. You come back the next day with a broken down Toyota saying you're going to take her to some mom and pop restaurant and so forth. What? No. I mean, take her out to a nice little place, but here's the trick. What you do every now and then, no. Take her to a regular place. Say, you know what? Let's go hang out tonight. Uh, oh, you like Wendy's? We go to drive through. Oh, and I know, don't, see, see, I see, I, I, I see, I get it. I see, I see the comments. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I see now you're attacking me. And you see, see, because you don't like truth. Right? <laughs> you don't like the truth. Because, you know, sometimes what we're trying to do is to impress people and lose ourselves. Just be yourself. When a woman says to you, no, I don't like it that way. You know, of course, sometimes you have to dress for your man just for your woman. I get all of that. But every time, I don't like that. And you can never please them. You ain't, listen, no, be yourself. If you like your hair a certain way and that's you, why do you have to change for them? Why can't they change to accept you who, just the way you, who you are? Why can't they just accept you the way who you are? Oh, that's, that's, that's going to get me in trouble. Don't ever lose yourself in marriage. And I know you may think, what are you saying, Henry? It is possible that you can be in marriage and over the years lose your identity, lose yourself. There's so many women, um, and, and in cases men too, but in particularly women who for years you devote yourself to the man, you give him kids, you, you do all the stuff, you're there in the home and you're doing and you're doing and you're doing and you're doing and you're giving and you're giving and you're giving 
and you're there and um, he's working, hustling out there. And sometimes he does crazy stuff and, and you forgive and you forgive and you forgive and uh, you lose yourself in the process. At the end of the day, when he walks out, I want a divorce or he just says, I'm tired, I'm done, whatever, or he's deceased. Then you realize you don't even have a life because in the marriage, you never took time out to be you. Because you're always walking on edge because you have to always please him and so forth. Be yourself. Every now and then, you know, uh, you got to say, I got to get out of this house. Not saying being an irresponsible wife, I got to get out. And I got to go with, you know, find some girls. One, See, men, men, it's good for us to find other men in our lives and, and, and so forth. But the way women are built you need a support system. Be very careful of a woman who have no friends. Ooh. Be very careful of a woman who, who have no friends, who trusts nobody, who thinks nobody is trustworthy, who doesn't want to listen to Be very careful of that woman. Very careful. A woman needs a support system, a good girlfriend that she can lean to, one that is trustworthy, one that she can hang out with, one that she can say, let's go to the mall and not a pest, not going with her and want her to buy her clothes. No, you want a girlfriend that when you go to the mall, you buy your stuff, she buy her stuff too. We just hanging out. <laughs> you know, a girl that when you tell her your issues, she ain't jealous over you and want what you have. See, you want that kind of a friend, but don't lose yourself in marriage. So many women in marriage, you lose yourself as a wife. You lose yourself as a mother. You give so much to your kids. And by the time they grow up and go to college and, you know, here it is, you're giving them all your money, everything. You denied yourself. They're off got with their boyfriend, got with their girlfriend, will give more to their lover. You'll be home needing $10. And if they had $10 and had a choice to give it to their boyfriend, they'll give it to their boyfriend in a heartbeat versus giving it to you. So don't ever lose yourself. And I could go on and on. Just figure, just imagine, because I'm running out of time here. The stuff that you can do to lose yourself in marriage. Don't ever do that. Same thing with men. Don't ever lose yourself in parenting. I talked a little bit about that. And then in the pursuit of wealth. Yes, get all the money you can. I, I, I am one who teach people, you know, to gain wealth, you know, live a, 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 a budgeted life, a life that you have a budget, <laughs> you know, um, and plan and, you know, there's ways to gain wealth. It's not going to be overnight, you know, and so forth. But don't go after material things so much that it costs you who you are. It's not worth it. I hope I helped you today on the podcast. Make that decision to live your best life, your way according to God, and make sure you don't lose yourself in the process. I love you. Thanks for watching. Please send me your comments, and I can't wait to talk to you again on the next podcast. Mm -hmm.